Well, good morning. Today is the first Sabbath of the 13th month on God's calendar, and it's Monday, March 2nd, 2020. I'm excited to be here. I hope you guys are all excited to be here. Uh, we're excited because uh, we love honoring the Lord on His Sabbath day, and um, all of you that are on Facebook, all of you that are watching this right now uh, that may not be part of our ministry, you might be asking, why is this the the first Sabbath of the 13th month. What the heck does that mean? Well, on God's calendar, he sets up um, the, ba the barley to be our calendar. Um, if you read Exodus 12, Exodus 13, he talks about the barley has to be a aviv, and then once it's a aviv, that means it's just about right, then they go pick it so they can have it for Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and Feast of First Fruit. But this year, the barley did not come because it was too wet, so we had to add another month before we could see the new moon and then start our month. That's how God's calendar works. And you can read that in Exodus 12 and Exodus 13. We talked about it last week on the message. So today is the Sabbath, and it is the, uh, the first Sabbath of the 13th month. And here's how you get to the Sabbath for all of you that are new. You look at spots for the new moon, which we did last week. On this exact day, we saw the new moon. So we knew seven days from then was going to be the seventh day. So it works like this. You spot the new moon, and then you just start to count. Count day one, day two, day three, four, five, six, seven, and the seventh day. If you go outside tonight, you'll see the moon. It'll be a one half a moon. That's God's calendar. God made his calendar in the sun, moon, and stars for signs, seasons, days, and years, just like he says he did in the Bible. And then day eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. On the 14th day, which is always a full moon, that was the day Jesus died, which will be the 14th day of the first month. And then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, it'll be um, a half a moon, um, you know, two weeks from now, and then the other side, and then it'll be a, a dark moon or a little sliver again, and then the, the ninth, 29th day of the month, we go out and look for the new moon again. So just wanted to share that with you, just in case this is your first time learning this. Um, for all of us that are here, this is something you need to know. You need to be able to articulate this message to everybody you speak to from this point on. So from this point on, you need to know this information. You need to not just rely on us to teach you this information. If there's no video available to you, you need to still know this information and honor the Sabbath day. If there's no internet access available to be able to watch this message, you need to know this information for yourself. And so the way you find the true Sabbath day, you spot the new moon, and that's the first Sabbath. It looks like that. The second, third, fourth, and, uh, and the fourth Sabbath looks like that. It's the new moon, first Sabbath, second, third, and fourth. That's how the Sabbaths are. So you need to know this information from this point on. And then, of course, our holy days. Um, you can read about that in Leviticus 23, verse 1 through 44. Uh, the Lord's Passover is when he died. He was buried on unleavened bread. He rose on first fruit. He came and gave down the Holy, the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai to Moses and the Israelites on the Feast of Weeks. And then when he will return either to get his bride or he let us out to go get his bride, to go find his bride, was on the Feast of Trumpets. Day of Atonement is when he judges his people and when we pray for the people and pray for the nations. And then the Feast of Tabernacles is when he's setting up his kingdom on earth where he's tabernacling with the people. So Jesus came to fulfill these feast days. And so what we're going to go through today is a lesson that God put on my heart. And you need to know this message. You need to understand this message. And this is a message from God. First of all, our ministry is Save Our Truth Ministry. You can go to our website, which is themarkrevealed.com, and you can download a bunch of documents about the mark of the beast. You can download videos and watch videos about um, the, you know, our entire lesson. Our, also, our website is savedbytruth.com. Um, you're welcome to go to our website, savedbytruth.com, and you know people that are, want to support our ministry can do so right at the website as well. And you can see all the people that we serve and, and all the orphans and all the people that we take care of in our ministry. Um, you can see them on, online. And so... So honoring the Lord's festivals are so important. Next month, we will be honoring Passover. And so we want to know who are the people of God. It's those who are true disciples of Jesus. 
who hold to the teachings of, in the Bible. You need to repent from your sins. You need to be baptized, full immersion in water for the forgiveness of your sins. You need to do the Ten Commandments and keep the seventh day holy based on God's calendar and be ready and waiting between the Feast of Trumpets to the Feast of Tabernacles when the Lord is coming to get His people. Here's another message the Lord wants you to see. In the Old Testament, God's people were circumcised to become part of the family. When the Israelites had the ark, they were protected. The ark held the covenant of God. The Ten Commandments was the covenant of God. The Ten Commandments was written on stone. Only God's people could have the ark, and the Israelites had the ark and were saved and protected. God's people were circumcised. They were baptized in water to become part of the family of God. When the disciples have the ark, they were protected. When the disciples have the ark of the covenant, because the ark held the covenant of God, we are the ark. Understand, the ark of the covenant, the, the covenant was inside the ark. God showed us six, four, five, six years ago about the Ark of the Covenant. You are the Ark that holds the covenant. The Ten Commandments were put on your heart when you were baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. You are the, the Ark that holds the covenant. That's why He protects you. The Ten Commandments still are the covenant. The Ten Commandments are written on our hearts. Only Jesus' true disciples have the Ark, and we are the Ark of the Covenant, and we'll be saved and protected. I hope you guys understand that the Lord has chosen you to take His Ark to the world. Let's go preach this message. What I want to talk about today, God put on my heart to share this with you, because you need to know what's going on. And I'm just going to play just a small smidgen of this video so you can understand. A global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. There was no one there to look at treatment approaches. Uh, no one to look at the diagnostics. No one to, to figure out what tools should be used. As an example, uh, we could have taken the blood of survivors, processed it, and put that plasma back in people to protect them. Uh, but that was never tried. So there was a lot that was missing. And these things are really a global failure. The WHO is funded to monitor epidemics, but not to do these things I talked about. Now in the movies, it's quite different. There's a group of handsome epidemiologists ready to go. They move in, they save the day, but that's just pure Hollywood.
share with you what's going on. And what's going on is that man is part of a big gigantic thing that's happening around the world. Um, and basically this, this virus that's going on was owned by him and I think the Queen of England as well as part of it as well. And um, that's why it's being spread so far around the world. Uh, but the Lord has a different plan. The Lord said he protects his people. So let me give this out. Let me pass this out. By the way, all of you um, online that are part of the ministry already have this in your email. The title of this message is, The People Who Have the Ark Will Be Saved and Protected. So God protects his people who have the Ark of the Covenant. And we're going to be looking at scriptures on that today. Because God wants you to know, there's nothing to fear. The world is afraid. The world will be afraid. Because what's coming is going to be unbelievable to all of you. It's going to be unbelievable. You're going to see some things that are going to happen around you that are going to be terrifying to a lot. But you have to be aware and alert now. Now is the time to be awake and alert. And so let's look at the, the verse of the day. It says, but he knows the way that I take. When he tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. Amen. And that was Job. That was Job 23. And that's exactly what happened. Satan came to test Job through his times of trial, and, and Job didn't turn aside. He didn't go a different direction. He didn't, you know, falter when Satan tried to tempt him and take everything from him. But here's the big thing. Satan had to go ask for permission from God to make it happen. So just like we talked about last week, God allows things to happen or he causes things to happen. And the Lord's telling me that the reason why this virus is going around the world is to scare the life out of the majority of the people that aren't in his covenant, that aren't honoring him, so that they can get to the, come to their knees and start honoring the Lord. We're going to read some scriptures about that, and then we're going to read some scriptures and see some things that can help you understand what we should do from this point. Let's read Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 10. Deuteronomy 10. We're going to start in verse 1. It says, At that time, the Lord said to me, In one second, let me just make sure everyone's muted. At that time, the Lord said to me, Chisel out two stone tablets, like the first one, and come up to me on the mountain. Also make a wooden ark. So, if you guys don't remember the story, when the Israelites were, on the top of, were at the bottom of the mountain, and Moses went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, what ended up happening is they had a big party down at the bottom and made a golden calf, and Moses was so mad he threw the covenant and threw the Ten Commandments. It would be kind of like a, a, a husband and wife getting married, and then the husband comes down with the wedding ring, ready to get married, and the wife's cheating on him. That, and so he kind of threw the wedding ring away. That's kind of what happened. The Israelites were already um, honoring false gods, and so he decided not to go along with the wedding. But then, later on, it happened where he, he told them to go back up and build another Ten Commandments and put it in the ark. So let's read. Verse 3. So I made the ark out of acacia wood and chiseled out of two stone tablets, like the first one. I went up to the mountain with the two tablets in my hand. The Lord wrote on these tablets what he had written before, the Ten Commandments. He had proclaimed to you on the mountain, out of the fire, on the day of assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I came back down the mountain and put the tablets in the ark. I had made as the Lord had commanded me. And they are there now. This is an encouraging scripture, 
Very crazy. I love how God shows me these scriptures when I'm not prepared for them. Because a few things we got to look at. First of all, who is the Lord? God. The Lord is Jesus. He just had not become flesh yet. So the Lord in the Old Testament, which we call the Old Testament, is the same Lord in the New Testament. So the Lord, Jesus, gave them the Ten Commandments. And it says he put it on stone. He wrote it on stone, and then they had to go and put it in the ark. So they put the Ten Commandments inside of the ark, and it says, and they are there now. They are inside the ark right now. So somewhere on earth, there's this ark that was built that have these Ten Commandments, original ones, in there somewhere. I don't know where it is, but it doesn't matter. And you'll see why a little bit later. Let's keep reading. The Israelites traveled from the wells of Benai, Jachan, to Masara. There Aaron died and was buried. And Eleazar, his son, succeeded him as priest. From there they traveled to Good. Gada and Jopbathana, <laughs> the land with streams of water. And at the time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister, to pronounce blessings in his name as they still do today. So the Lord appointed one man, a Levite. Moses' families, because Moses was a Levite, appointed one man to go and stand before the Lord to promote and to teach this covenant to the people. And it says again, and he does it still to today. I love how the Bible is living tonight, because I believe he's doing the exact same thing today. Let's keep reading. That's why the Levites have no shared inheritance among the fellow Israelites. The Lord is their inheritance, as the Lord your God told them. Let's keep reading. Now I had stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, as I did the first time. The Lord listened to me at this time also. It was not his will to destroy you, Go, the Lord said to me, and lead the people on their way, so they may enter and possess the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. So Moses went up, got the Ten Commandments again, went to go and lead the people into the promised land. Let's keep reading. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commandments and decrees that I am giving you today. Why? For your own good. See, this is what the Lord wants us to do. This is the message that needs to be preached to the world today. This is the message you need to be teaching to your kids. This is the message you need to be teaching to your congregations. Is that the Lord wants us to do one few things. One, fear Him. Have a holy fear of the Lord. Two, walk in obedience to Him. Obey what He teaches in the commandments. Three, to love Him, which is obedience to the commandments. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Not in contempt. Not act like you're serving them, but really serving yourself and, and worship things. And to observe the Lord's commandments and decrees I'm giving you today. And if you do, it'll go well with you. If you don't, it won't go well with you. Let's keep reading. To the Lord your God belongs, the Lord, to the Lord your God belongs the heaven and the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them, and he chose you, their descendants, above all the nations, as it is here today. The Lord's talking directly to you. He's not talking to some other people. 
There's no one else on earth honoring the Sabbath today with the exception of the people that the Lord has brought it through through us. So he's talking directly to you. And you notice how many times he says today? That's been three times already. Because the Bible is living and active. It's not just for them back then. He's talking to us today. Let's keep reading. Circumcise your heart. That means purify it. Get the sin out of your heart. Confess it. Get open with your life. Get the garbage out. Circumcise your life, your heart. Therefore, do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widows. He loves the foreigner residing among you and gives them food and clothing. What that's telling you is that if there's people that have not had their sins forgiven yet, but they're still trying to honor the Lord, he provides for them too. Or if they are baptized disciples, but they're not part of the body of Christ yet. Maybe, well, they are part of the body if you got baptized, but maybe they're not fellowshipping with the body of Christ. He protects them too. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourself were a foreigner in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him. Take your oath in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performs for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors who went down into Egypt were 70 in all. And now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of the sky. So God made a lot of Israelites back then. But a lot of those Israelites did not go into the promised land. Why didn't they go into the promised land? It was because they were disobedient to what it says right here. They were disobedient to the commandment. Because the covenant is what made them holy. Them honoring the covenant. Let's read. Let's read the promise. Deuteronomy 28. Over the years, we've read the curses. But now let's see the blessings for obedience. It says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands or commandments, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you above, high above all the nations on earth. And all the blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. See, obedience is mandatory. For anyone to tell you that you don't have to obey the Lord's commandments, they're deceptive. They're false teachers. They're deceitful workers, and they're lying to you. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's what man teaches that came directly from Satan. Let's keep reading. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your hand, land will be blessed. Um, in your lifestyle, and your young, uh, the fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd, and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading troughs will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in, and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant the in, that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you in one direction, but flee in seven. The Lord will send a blessing among your barns and on everything you put your hands to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people, as he promised on oath if you can keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him. So when will we be considered and established as a holy people? It's when we keep his commandments. It's not when we just believe in Jesus. It's when we keep his commandments. It says, verse 10, Then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. They will fear you. The Lord will grant you an abundance of prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crop of your grounds. In the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. 
The Lord will open the heavens and the storehouses of his bounty to send rain on the land in season and to bless the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commandments of the Lord your God that I give you to this day and carefully follow them, you will be at the top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from the commandments I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. See, the Lord's very clear on who, who's blessed. He's very clear on who he's going to take care of. He's very clear on who is going to be protected and go into the promised land. But if you read the curses, which we're not going to do today, you can read all the curses from 15 through 68. You'll see how the Israelites have been punished for 4,000 years because of their disobedience to the commandments. Because they did the opposite of what the Lord just told. And they're still being punished till today. But the Lord has brought up a Levite. The Lord has brought up Israelites again to come and teach this message all over again. And that message is being taught to you today. Let's keep reading. Let's read over 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 6. 1 Samuel 6. 6. So you've got to understand the Ark of the Covenant held the Ten Commandments. And it always held the Ten Commandments. It would go to and fro. They would go around the place. And wherever they took the Ten Commandments, they were blessed. Wherever the Ten Commandments got taken away, it was calamity. It was all kinds of mayhem. It was always the Ten Commandments. It was always the covenant. And so let's read. 1 Samuel 6, verse 1 through 21. When the Ark of the Lord had been, been in Palestine territory for seven months, the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, What shall we do with the Ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it back to its place. They answered, If you return the Ark of the God of Israel, do not send it back without a gift. By all means, send a guilt offering to him, them, to him. Then you will be healed, and you will know why his hand have not lifted from you. If you read before that, they were going through some mayhem because they had the ark. They had basically got the ark, and the Lord was killing them and doing all kinds of stuff because of, they had the ark in their possession, which they shouldn't have. Nobody should have the ark in their possession. And if you look at some of these deceitful groups out there, they may have a, a form of the ark, but they're deceptive workers. And you wonder why that whole ministry is going through mayhem. It's because they shouldn't have the ark. God's people has the ark. Let's keep reading. They answered. Actually, verse 4. The Philistines asked, What guilt offering should we send to them? To him. They replied, Five gold tumors and five gold rats. That's an interesting gift. <laughs> but it says, according to the number of the Philistine rulers, because the same plague has struck both you and your rulers. Make models of the tumors and of the rats that are destroying the country and give glory to Israel's God. So I guess... They, the rats were destroying the, the community and they were, all had tumors all over them. So they wanted to make a, a statue of those to give back to God and say, okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. You know, no, mercy, I give. They wanted to tap out, basically. Perhaps he will lift the hands from you and your gods in your land. Why do you harden your hearts as the Egyptian and the Pharaohs did? When Israel's God dealt harshly with them, did they not send Israelite out so they could go on their way? Now then, get a new cart ready with two cows that have calves and never have been yoked. Hitch the cows to the cart, but take their calves away and pin them up. Take the ark, ark of, the, of the Lord and put it on the cart and in a chest um, beside it, put the gold objects you are sending back to them as a guilt offering. Send it on its way, but keep watching it. For if it goes up into its own territory towards Beth Shemesh, then the Lord has brought this great disaster on us. But if it does not, 
then we will know that it was not the hand, that it was not his hand that struck us, but that it happened to be by chance. So they wanted to test to see if it was the Lord who struck them, or was it an accident? Was it just by accident? So they're going to see. So they did this. The Lord took two, uh, they took two such cows and hitched them to the cart and pinned up their calves. They placed the ark of the Lord on the cart and along with the chest containing the gold rats and the models of the tumors. Then the cows went straight up to Beth Shemesh, keeping on the road and low, lowing the way. They did not turn to the right or to the left. The rulers of the Fal of Philistines followed them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley. And when they looked and saw the ark, they rejoiced at the sight. The, ark, the cart came to the field of Joshua and Beth Shemesh. They, and there it stopped beside a large rock. The people chopped the wood of the ark and sacrificed the cow as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord, together with the chest containing the gold objects, and placed them on the large rock. Large rock. On that day, the people of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices to the Lord. The five rulers of the Philistines saw this and returned that same day to Akron. These are the gold tumors and Philistines sent as a guilt offerings to the Lord. As one in Ashdod, Gizad, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. And the tumors of the gold rats was according to the number of Philistine towns belonging to the five rulers. The fortified towns with their country villages, the large rock on which the Lord, which the Levites set the ark of the Lord as a witness to this day in the field of Joshua and Besh Shemesh. But God struck down some of the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they looked at the ark of the Lord. So these people got the ark and they looked at the ark and they died. That's how powerful the ark of the Lord was. What the Lord wants you to just see is how important the ark of the Lord were to the people back then. It was important to him and it was important to the people. The yeah. Lord does not play with his ark. The Lord does not play with his covenant. It says, the people mourned because the heavy blow to the Lord had dealt them. And the people of Beth Shemesh asked, who can stand in the presence of the Lord? This holy God, whom will the ark go from here? Then they sent a messengers to the people of Kirath Jeremiah, saying, the Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord, come down and take it to your town. See, they always wanted to get the ark out of there. Anybody that wasn't the Lord wanted the ark gone. Because the ark did damage. And I believe the ark right now, the ark of the covenant is doing damage around the world. People that have the fake ark. People that are trying to act like they have the ark. People that are trying to be God's people. God is going to do havoc just like he did back then. But the Lord protects the people who really have the ark. Let's keep reading. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 15. First Chronicles 15, verse 1 and 2. It says, After David had constructed buildings for himself in the city of David, he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, no one but the Levites might, may carry the ark of God because the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before him forever. See again, the ark came back again. Now the Israelites have the ark and God selects one people to carry the ark. Everyone don't get the ark. Everyone don't get the covenant. Covenant. God's people gets the covenant. Let's keep reading. Let's go to Joshua 3. Joshua 3. Joshua 3, starting in verse 1. This is a pretty awesome story. 
Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving the order to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your position to follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep in a distance about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do an amazing thing among you. Joshua said to the priest, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it and went ahead of the people, uh, ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel, and they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who, who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan waters, go stand in the river. So let me give you the preface. The Israelites were about to go into the Promised Land again. Remember the grandkids weren't, weren't going into the Promised Land? But the Israelites, remember what they had to do? They had to cross the Red Sea. That God parted the Red Sea, he crossed the Red Sea, the, the Egyptians went in and he killed them all, right? They had to go through water. They had to be baptized through water as adults when they went to the Promised Land, right? So that's exactly what's about to happen again with the grandchildren, because the grandchildren were baptized back then, because you have to be an adult to do so. So let's read. It says, Joshua said to the Israelites, come here. And listen to the words of the Lord, your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Parasites, Jebusites, Amorites, and Jeshusites. Those are the same people that were in the promised land back then, and guess who those are today? They're called AI. They're the exact same people back then as running the world today. It says, see, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is on all the earth, will go into the Jordan ahead of you. As soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan as the water flows downstream, it will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage. And all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched down the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing and it piled up in a heap in a great distance and called the town Adam in the vicinity of Zerathan. While the water was flowing down the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea was completely cut off. So the people crossed over to the opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry, dry, dry ground while the Israelites passed by until the whole nation had completing crossing on dry ground. Isn't that awesome? See, Noah was saved through it with an ark on an ark because he was on the ark and he was saved through water. The water washed away all the sin and they walked through on dry ground. The Israelites, when God called his people again, they went through on dry ground. They walked, he parted the Red Sea. They went through on dry ground. The ark was with them. He was teaching them the covenant. They were going to get the, the, prop, the covenant of the Lord. Here they had the ark. They walked through on dry ground. He parted the water and they went through, that was their baptism. And that's always the case for God's people. It's the same routine, no matter what. So let's look. This is so awesome how God puts this, paints this whole picture. So he went in and they walked around the town of Jericho. Remember, they walked around it seven times and it fell. And they blew the trumpets, remember all that? And they took the town of Jericho. So now they took the town, another town. So now they're going to go into the promised land. And we're going to read this because this is such an amazing story. It says, AI destroyed. See, back then, the Canaanites had changed their name. They didn't always like to change the name. 
Now they're called Ai with that land. It says, then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. That's the first thing the Lord wants us to do right now, is to not be afraid, not be discouraged. You're going to see calamities going on around the world. Don't be afraid and don't be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. So he had already done it. He had telling you what's going to happen in advance. He hadn't done it yet because he was going to do it, but he's telling them, go with you. I have taken it. It's done. Consider it done. And that's the exact same thing God's going to do again. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And his people will possess it. Let's keep reading. Verse 2. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king except that you may carry off the plunder and the livestock for yourself. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Do not go very far from it. All of you be on alert. And I and all those with me will advance on the city and when the men come out to get against us, as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city. For they will say, they are running away from us, as they did before. So we will flee from them, and you are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it to you into your hands. And when you have taken the city, set it on fire, do what the Lord has commanded, see to it, you have my words. So they were going to ambush Ai. Isn't that awesome how God does this? God has this all planned out. So he has the, the Israelites come up and run from them. So they look like they're afraid. The ones come from behind, take over the city, and they go in. So let's read what happens. Then Joshua sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait until Belai and Ai, uh, to, between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent the night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered up his army. And he had the leaders of Israel march before them to Ai. The entire force that was with them marched up and approached the city and in front of it. They set up camp on the north of Ai with the valley between them and the city. Joshua had taken, up, taken about 5,000 men with him in ambush between Bethel and Ai to the west of the city. So the soldiers stood up, took up their positions with the main camp to the north of the city and the ambush to the west of it. That night, Joshua went to, into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all his men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle in a certain place overlooking Ariba. But they did not know that an ambush had been set against them behind the city. Joshua and all the Israel and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled towards the wilderness. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and lured, they were lured away from the city. Not a man remained in Ai, Bethel, who, who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold out towards Ai, the javelin that is in your hand, for into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out towards the city, the javelin that was in his hand. And as soon as he did this, the men in ambush rose quickly to their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set it on fire. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that an awesome story how they did that? And then it says, Then the men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising up to the sky. But they had no chance to escape in any direction. The Israelites who had been fleeing towards the wilderness turned back against their pursuers. When the Joshua and all Israel saw the ambush they had taken the city and the smoke was going up from it, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. Those in ambush came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the middle with Israel on both sides. Israel cut them down, leaving neither survivor nor fugitive. 
But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel, when Israel finished killing all the men of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, and they had chased them, and when every one of them had been put, by the, put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed all who were in it. Twelve thousand men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back his hand that held out the javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and the plunder of the city as the Lord had instructed, instructed Joshua. So I used to wonder, why would God kill all these women and children and babies and do all this and all the animals and everything? Why would he do it? Because they had infected the gene pool. They had infected the people. They had put the, the demonic force of the Nephilim back into the people. And so God had to kill them all. And he's about to do the same thing again. That's what this is all about, you guys. That's what this virus is about. That's what this, this purging of the world is about. And God is doing the exact same thing to the people that don't want to obey him. To this demonic force that's leading people into sin by the billions right now. He's about to do the exact same thing. Let's keep reading. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. He impaled the body of the king of Ai on a pole and left it there until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered them to take the body from the pole and throw it down at the entrance of the city gate. And they raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains to this day. The covenant renewed at Mount Ebal. Isn't it interesting? After all of that, they renewed the covenant again. It said that Joshua built a mount on Mount Ebal, the altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites, he built it in accordance with what was written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones, on it with no iron tools have been used. On it they all they offered the Lord burnt offerings and sacrifice fellowship offerings. In the presence of Israel in, of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses. In other words, he wrote the Ten Commandments. All the Israelites, with their elders and officials and judges, were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Facing the Levitical priests who carried it, both the foreigners living among them and the native-born were there. Half of the people stood in front of Mount Gisram, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had formally commanded when he gave instructions to the blessed of the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the foreigners who lived among them. See, it always came back to the ark. It always comes back to the covenant. The Lord, who, the people who have the covenant are protected by the Lord. The Lord fights for those people. And we have that covenant. Let's keep reading. Let's look. Matthew. Matthew 5. See, now the Lord became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And there's deceptive teachers out there that say that we don't need to honor the commandments. We don't need to honor the holy days. We don't need to honor the Ten Commandments because they were nailed to a cross. They're deceived. They don't know what they're talking about. Look what it says. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. See, they weren't fulfilled back in the days because God divorced Israelites. He divorced them and got rid of the commandments in the holy days. He got rid of it because they didn't want to honor it. So that's why he gave them Christmas and Easter and all these pagan holidays that people honor today. He took away their Sabbath and he gave them Sunday keeping and Saturday keeping and Friday night to Saturday night keeping or any day you want to keep it. That you can honor any day you want it. He didn't care anymore because he said, I'm done with you. He divorced his people. 
But he also says in the last days he's bringing back his people through his Levites, through his Israelites that are going to honor his commandments. And it's going to be the same exact covenant. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. He came to finish it. Fulfill means complete. It wasn't complete before. They never went into the promised land. And when the children did, they disobeyed too later on. And so he didn't come to get rid of the commandments. He came to complete it, to fulfill it. Let's keep reading. Verse 19. Actually, verse 18. It says, Therefore I tell you, until heaven and earth have disappeared, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Guess what? Heaven and earth hasn't, hasn't disappeared yet. Heaven and earth hasn't disappeared. So the covenant is still here. The law is still here. It's still active. It says, Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands, if you do the, a translation, it says commandments. Anyone who sets aside one of the least of the commandments, the one you believe is the least, which most in the world believe the Sabbath day is the least of these commandments. Anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments, the Bible says will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you certainly will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Did the Pharisees and teachers of the law honor the commandments? Yeah. Did the Pharisees and teachers of the law honor the Sabbath day? Yeah. So unless your righteousness, unless you honor it even more than they do, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Don't deceive yourself you will not make it to the kingdom of heaven. So it's so important that you got to understand that these commandments are prevalent today. As a matter of fact, the Lord has commanded me to now start teaching a lesson on the Ten Commandments on a weekly basis. So I'm going to be starting a live webinar every single week on Facebook about one of the commandments, teaching how to obey the commandments. The Lord put that on my heart this morning. Let's keep reading. John. John 14. John 14, starting in verse 15. Anyone who says that the commandments are done away with doesn't know the Lord. They don't love the Lord. They don't know anything about the Lord. They're following a, a different Jesus. They're not following the Lord of the Bible. It says, if you love me, Keep my commandments. That's what it says. It says commands, but if you look in a different translation, it says commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you don't love me, don't keep my commandments. That's what that means. If you say you love the Lord and you don't keep the commandments, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. That's what the Bible says in 1 John. Look what it says. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because he neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you. At that time, the ark was with him. But it says, and will be in you. The commandments will be in you. The ark will be in you. The commandments will be there with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, because I live, and you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Here's the key. Whoever has the commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. If anyone tells you that you don't have to obey the commandments, they're liars. They're deceitful workers. They don't know what they're talking about. They're deceived. They're flat out wrong. It says, the one who loves me will be loved my, by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The Lord shows himself to the people who are keeping his commandments. 
Period. Just like it was in the Old Testament. Nobody in the Old Testament saw the Lord except the people keeping his commandments. Nobody got to talk to the Lord except the people that were keeping his commandments. No one was protected by the Lord except for the people that were keeping his commandments. No one the Lord fought for except for the people that were keeping the commandments. The commandments is the covenant between the Lord and his people. And it's the exact same today. There is no difference. The Lord is the same at the beginning at the end. There is no difference. Let's keep reading. Matthew 19. Matthew 19, starting in verse 16. Because people are so deceived, God had to say it a few different ways. Because people say, well, well, what commandments should I honor? Which, which ones? Well, let's read the Bible. It says, the rich man said the same thing. A rich man came to Jesus and asked, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? That's what people all around the world are asking right now. What do I need to do to get eternal life? And what will people tell you out there? You've got to say the sinner's prayer and you'll be saved. There ain't nowhere in the scripture, the sinner's prayer. Oh, you got to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's no scripture on that. And there's no one proving doing that in the scripture. They'll say, oh, you got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you're saved. And there ain't nobody in the Bible that's ever done such a thing. He said, oh, you just got to go believe in Jesus and you're saved. You're saved by belief or you're saved by faith alone. You're saved by works. You're saved by just because you are saved. God saves everyone. He died for all men, so all men are saved. It's the most ridiculous stuff out there that people come up with. But let's see what the Bible says. What do you mean? It says, verse 17, why do you ask me what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. I mean, that's not ambiguous. That's about as plain English as it can possibly be. He can't say it any more clear. He can't say it. It's not a parable. It's not confusing. He's not even trying to trick you. He says it about as clear as he can. He didn't even use the word commands like he sometimes does in the scriptures. He wanted to make it plain English so everybody gets it. If you want to enter eternal life, which means, let me translate that in English, if you do not want to go through the great tribulation, either get killed for your faith or go through a gas chamber or get killed by this virus or whatever the situation God's going to put on you, if you don't want to go through that and you want to be in the kingdom of God in heaven with Jesus, there's one thing you got to do. One thing is you have to keep the commandments. That's mandatory. It's not a good suggestion or an idea. They're commandments. Let's keep reading. Because he asked the same question some of these silly people ask today. Which ones? He, he inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder. Where do we find that commandment? In the Ten Commandments. You shall not commit adultery. Where do we find that one? In the Ten Commandments. You shall not steal. Where do we find that one? Oh, where do, do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor and Where do we find those commandments? The Ten Commandments, they're the same. Now, he, now let me just preface this, because some people will say, yeah, but see, it doesn't say anything about the Sabbath there. So we don't, see, we don't need to honor the Sabbath. You're right, it doesn't say anything about the Sabbath. You're absolutely right, you got me on that one. But it also says that you don't have to, um, you can have idols. It doesn't say you, you don't have to, do not have any idols or anything either. It doesn't say that either. So does that mean we can now have idols? No. It doesn't say that to, to love the Lord as you, as you're, um, do not have any other gods before me. It doesn't say that. So does that mean we can now have other gods? Because it doesn't say that there. Based on your premise, we can have all the ones that's not there, right? Right. So we can have that, now, right? No, of course not. It doesn't make any sense. You understand? He's just telling them which ones. But here's the coolest part about this guy. This guy says, yeah, verse 20, he says, I have kept all this. I, I, all these I've kept. The young man said, what do I still lack? That was the perfect question. That would be the right question you should be asking right now. I honor all ten of those commandments. But which one do I still lack? That's the right question you should be asking. For the majority of the world, there's a lot of them. Some people lack. 
But the biggest one people lack, the one that Satan tried to dis get people, everyone to disobey, was remembering the fourth commandment, the Sabbath day, by keeping it holy. It says, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. See, that's the one he lacked. That's why Jesus answered that question with that one. But guess which one he didn't say? He didn't say, remember the Sabbath day. You know why? Because he probably kept the Sabbath day. Because everyone in the scriptures back then kept the Sabbath day. That was God's people. Look what it says. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, but he had great wealth. Wow, God just revealed something to me. This man was probably an Israelite. Why was he probably an Israelite? He probably was an Israelite because he was keeping the commandments. If he was keeping the commandments, he was an Israelite. That means baptized disciples today would be the same boat. See, these baptized disciples that see these scriptures right now will go away sad because they have great wealth. In other words, they got a nine to five job that they can't take off on a Monday to go on a Sabbath. You see, they, they'll go away sad because they have great wealth too. See, when the Sabbath next month ends up on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and they have great wealth, so they won't go and honor the Sabbath. They won't tell their boss, hey, I can't work on the Sabbath because they might lose their job. For fear of losing their job, they're willing to break the fourth commandment because they have great wealth. There's people all around the world run businesses, and they run their business every day, and they won't stop their business because they have great wealth. It's the same as this man. And I don't care if you're a baptized disciple or not. This is what's going to happen to you, it says. Verse 23, then Jesus said to his disciples, truly it's hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So bottom line, you guys, if you're a baptized disciple of Jesus right now, and you're choosing to disobey the fourth commandment, you will never make it to the kingdom of God. You will not go. You will go through the great tribulation. It says, verse 25, when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who can then be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, with man's ways, living by man's rules, it's impossible. But living by God's ways, by living by God's rules, all things are possible. Peter answered, what? We have left everything for you. What then will be there for us? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses and brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers and wives and children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and last will be first. What that's telling you is this disciple right now that have been a disciple for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, that have been preaching the word of God for many years, been teaching God's Bible for 30, 40, 50 years, that are not going to go through the great, they're going to go through the great tribulation, they will not make it to the kingdom of heaven. Because they refuse to repent from their sins. You've all been shown it. You've all been taught it. The message has been preached to you. The Levites and the Israelites have brought it to you. They've showed it to you in living color. The scriptures show it. It's as clear as day. And now it's your time to either repent or perish. Because that's what's going to happen. And the Lord doesn't want you to have any misunderstanding. Let's keep reading. So not only do you have to honor the commandments, Matthew, I'm sorry, Galatians, Galatians 3, Galatians 3 starting in verse 23, talking about who the children of God are, it says before the coming of faith, we were held custody under the law, locked up until faith that was to come, that was to come would be revealed, which is Jesus. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we must be justified by faith. Now that 
that faith has come, we're no longer under the guardian. That's correct. We are not under the, the law. In other words, we're not saved because of the law. No, we're not. But this is how we get it. But that doesn't mean the commandments is different. We were saved because of all the protection that God had put around us. But the commandments are different. That's a covenant. Look what it says. So in Christ Jesus, you're all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile nor slave nor free, nor there is male or female. You are all in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So not only do you have to honor the commandments, you have to be baptized in water for the forgiveness of your sins so you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's how we get the covenant in us. Remember God said you've got to give it to us and it was with you and then it will be in you. That's that comforter. That's that promise. Faith of truth inside of us. The spirit of truth. We get it at baptism. So only baptized disciples that are honoring the commandment will make it to the kingdom of God. Let's read two last group passages. Revelation. Revelation 3. Revelation 3, starting in verse 13. I'm sorry, Revelation 30, verse 7. To the church of Philadelphia. To the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who are holy and true, who holds the keys of David. When he opens, no one can shut, and when he no shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are the synagogue of Satan, those who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. See, this hour of trial that's coming right now, you guys, it's to test the inhabitants of the earth. We all got to go through a test. Every one of us. Either we're tested by God, or we're going to be tested through this calamity that's coming. But the Bible says clearly that those who keep His commandments and endure patiently are going to be spared from it. They're not going to have to go through it. It says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Don't let any man take your crown. Don't let any woman take your crown. Don't let any friend take your crown. Don't let any family member take your crown. Don't let any job or career or lifestyle or anything, any dreams or goals or hopes that you have for this world, don't let any of that take your crown. Your crown needs to be covered in the Lord. The Lord is your crown. Don't let anything get between you and the Lord. He says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. To the one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Baptized disciples of St. Michael's ministry, endure patiently. This is you. You are the Church of Philadelphia. You around the world that have been honoring the Sabbath day based on God's calendar, that have learned the commandments, that have taken your entire congregations off Sunday keeping and honoring God's Sabbath day. Over 500 pastors in India and Africa have taken their churches off Sunday keeping and are honoring the Sabbath day. More and more people around the world are coming to the knowledge of the truth. And if you get baptized in water for the forgiveness of your sin, you will be part of the Church of Philadelphia. There's only one church that does not go through the Great, great Tribulation, and it's the Church of Philadelphia and the people that are outskirts that actually become part of it. There's only one. All the rest go through it. So you got to understand, this needs to be your aim this needs to be your goal, and this needs to be your main desire in life. Revelation 14. 
Revelation 14, it reads, Then I looked, and there before me was a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their forehead. And I heard a sound from heaven like a roar of rushing water, and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard of that of a harpist playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves as women. They remained virgins. They follow their land wherever he goes. They were purchased among mankind and offered as first fruit to God in the land. No lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. Remember, there is no difference between man and woman in the scriptures anymore. So when it says they are virgin, they are virgin because they're not falling into the false doctrine. They're not um, married to the false woman, the false church that's out there. Not married to the Vatican and all its baby churches around that are teaching false doctrine about Sunday keeping. Or all the Jews, the people that call themselves Jews, they're Friday night to Saturday night keeping. Or all the other religions that sat, worship on Saturday or whatever days they feel like it. They're not falling into that. They've come out of that. God's people have come out and are honoring God's true holy days. And these are the people that will be saved. So let's look at this last passage. This last passage. Part. So honoring the Lord's festivals are so important. Next month we will be honoring Passover. And so we want to know who are the people of God. It's those who are true disciples of Jesus. Who hold to the teachings of, in the Bible. You need to repent from your sins. You need to be baptized, full immersion in water for the forgiveness of your sins. You need to do the Ten Commandments and keep the seventh day holy based on God's calendar and be ready and waiting between the Feast of Trumpets to the Feast of Tabernacles when the Lord is coming to get his people. Here's another message the Lord wants you to see. In the Old Testament, God's people were circumcised to become part of the family. When the Israelites had the ark, they were protected. The ark held the covenant of God. The Ten Commandments was the covenant of God. The Ten Commandments was written on stone. Only God's people could have the ark, and the Israelites had the ark and were saved and protected. God's people were circumcised. They were baptized in water to become part of the family of God. When the disciples have the ark, they were protected. When the disciples have the Ark of the Covenant, because the Ark held the covenant of God. We are the Ark. Understand, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the covenant was inside the Ark. God showed us six, four, five, six years ago about the Ark of the Covenant. You are the Ark that holds the covenant. The Ten Commandments were put on your heart when you were baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, you are the, the ark that holds the covenant. That's why he protects you. The Ten Commandments still are the covenant. The Ten Commandments are written on our hearts. Only Jesus' true disciples have the ark, and we are the ark of the covenant, and we'll be saved and protected. I hope you guys understand that the Lord has chosen you to take his ark to the world. Let's go preach this message. Let's end it up in prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you so much for this day. Wow, thank you so much for this powerful message, God, just showing us who we are. You showed us that we are the ark. We're not just bringing the ark. We're not just building the ark. Noah's name, Noah built the ark and got on it. He was in the ark. But you put the, the covenant in us. You put the covenant in the people. They get baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. And God, 
We're going to see tens of thousands die around this guy. But we got to be strong and courageous and persevere. I pray everyone that hears this message goes and takes this message to the world. Takes this message and goes and shares it and teaches it and preaches it. And God, I pray so many more come to the knowledge of the truth and repent. I pray people will defy their jobs, will not worry about their stock market, will not worry about their businesses, but will honor you on your holy day so you can bring your 144,000 to the covenant so we can go sing your song in the kingdom of God. We love you. We thank you so much for this day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.